Okay, we're doing this. Yay! Are you trying to say <laughs> that's why we're in? <laughs> we're in, we're in um, hello everybody, this is relationship where you have with Lee and eh? Paul. <laughs> um, yes, we are in Orlando. <laughs> yeah. And we've been sequestered here for the last um, three and a half days mm -hmm. writing. So if we seem a little punchy, it's because we've only talked to like one other person right. the whole time we've been here. Mm -hmm. And that's been um, our nephew and and actually, we haven't talked to him like in two days, so, <laughs> so we're a little punchy. We're, we're kind of like, we've you know. We've been working. We've been working. Yeah. We're yeah. working very hard. Yeah. Writing and drinking coffee. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a headache from just saying it. <laughs> That's right. But we did so, well, which is we good. Well. We yes. got done what we needed to do, so more coffee. Yes. Yes, so then now we get to go, go home this afternoon and... See our kids and and return to our normal life uh, and um, get all this stuff together so we could send it out for a book stuff. Book stuff. Right, book right. stuff. Wow. <laughs> Luckily, I stopped writing yesterday. So, yeah, I think I blew something in my head yesterday. Oh, uh, so let's see. Speaking of writing, yes. You should tell what the topic of today is. Today's right? topic is um, how the Brady Bunch messed up my life, and or. You know, media and relationships. And I realized that we were on a slippery slope nowadays. You know, um, it was okay when I was just, you know, practicing as a therapist to talk crap about the media. But now I am the media. Yeah, you know, so we now, have to be nicer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being like, oh, ouch. You okay? Yeah, no. No. Um, <laughs> no, it's like now we write and now, however, you know, we try to keep it, you know, good mm -hmm. i guess in terms of what we're portraying to to the world and and what examples we're setting um because the idea is that you know i don't know what what was first the chicken or the egg did the medium decide to warp the way we look at relationships or because we write the media are we already warped and that's why we have what we have Example. What is your favorite example? Okay, yes. I like to start out with Romeo and Juliet because they just, it just annoys me. Yeah. Um, I don't know who it is who thought that Romeo and Juliet was a love story, was solely this beautiful love story. It's not. Read the, read the story. One, it's a, it's a tragedy. And anybody who you know, knows anything about any type of literature, knows that that's the category it's under, is tragedy. Mm -hmm. um, spoiler alert, in case you haven't read it, they all die at the end. Okay? <laughs> well, I know Caesar read it because we, we all went to the same high school. Yes, right. <laughs> Freshman year high school, we had to read Romeo and Juliet. And I remember sitting there and, um, and saying, this has got to be, I mean, I and the girls were like, Oh my God, this is so romantic. And I'm like, this has got to be the biggest pile of crap I've ever read in terms of romance. And saw the movie. You know, and saw the movie. Well, yeah, that's different because he was cute. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, it was not romantic. It was dramatic. It mm -hmm. was melodramatic. It was, um, it was ridiculous. Teenage angst. It was teenage mm -hmm. angst. It was, um, it was rebound love. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, even, but people didn't see that. And people, people, I don't know, maybe it's, it's, um, man's need to feel loved or, or the fact that we just aren't clear on what that is. You know, I, I think that in our writing the last couple of days, um, we're writing a book on relationship. Obviously. Funny. Yeah. How <laughs> we're writing yeah. a book on relationship. But, um. Defining what a relationship is, mm -hmm. um, defining what it means to be in love. Um, there aren't very clear definitions on that, mm -hmm. and I don't think most people 
could give you a definition of those things. And yet this is what we're all looking for, relationship and love and, and you know, um, and I think a lot of that has to do with being confused by the way that we feel and the way that we are in relationships and then watching, you know, TV or watching movies or listening to music, it's, there's almost like, um, like there's a crashing, you know, thing like, okay, I feel like this and yet this is telling me I should feel like this mm -hmm. and it's saying, I mean, people, I mean, people actually say that if you're not fighting when you're married, you aren't really in love. Right. If you're not feeling you jealous, exactly. If you're not feeling jealousy, you're not really in love. Mm -hmm. You know, these are common themes in everything that we're watching on TV nowadays, right. or movies, or anything yes. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literature. These are. This is what you see in Romeo and Juliet. You yeah. basically see two angst-ridden kids. Well, now she's a kid. He's already nineteen. He's an old Ooh, man. He's now. an old man. Yes. Um, I'm still going to call them kids. Okay. Um, <laughs> you can. Yes, you oh. can. <laughs> um, you got the two angst-ridden kids who are basically, you know, doing their lust of thing. That's na that's a natural thing for them to do. You know, it is natural for that age. And somewhere along the line, we turned it into this story of true and perpetual love. Now... Well, they loved each other so much. They killed each other. They killed themselves, themselves. over each other. That's yeah. not good. See, that's not... That is... That's the... That's not basically, good. in our day now, they would have slammed the door closed and, you know, thrown a tantrum and... It's all the same. It's all this big tantrum. All they did was have a big tantrum and... But they, they didn't had even to, you were, But they didn't mean to, to kill themselves? Yeah, they didn't. Yeah, so they screwed that one up too, you know? It was it was a tantrum. It was drama. It sounded mm -hmm. good. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. Anything? No, Where are we at? That's just, no, that's good. Mm -hmm. Now, now let's see. If we talk about, do we have anything? And saw the movie. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. um, if we talk about things like Brady Bunch, this is the one that I that I put in the ad. Brady Bunch. Mm. This is a story. Now, don't get me wrong. I watch the Brady Bunch. I still watch the Brady Bunch she if I get a chance. I bunch. love the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I could quote Brady Bunch. Um, the Brady Bunch movies that they did years later, I thought they were fantastic. They were hilarious. So, <laughs> me love Brady Bunch. Now, unrealistic? Good God, yeah. You've got two, two separate families. You know, mom and her three daughters, dad and his three sons. They, they join their families, even though they showed what we would call tension between the siblings, very little tension, mm -hmm. very little, you know, in, in relation to what we see nowadays, you know, it doesn't make sense, especially with a large family like that, you know, there should have been a lot more of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you see Carol and Mike, um, who have sex pretty much every night yeah you know every time you see them in bed there's always the oh yes mr. Brady thing and then then you know then he gets on top of her and then you know right. dot, 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 you know what happens mm -hmm. and I'm like damn you know now now as a young impressionable child you see those images you don't know to dot 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 you don't know what you're filling it in with however your brain does so your brain does things like, okay, it dot, dot, dots. And then as you grow up and you start learning about, you know, what couples do and stuff like that, your brain will go back and fill that part in. Yeah, well, it starts filling in things that are appropriate for that level. Right. So at some point you dot, 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 a bunch of kissing. So mm -hmm. they must keep kissing. Then you get older and kind of dot, 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 some groping-ish stuff in there. And you get older, and you dot, dot, dot. And you know. go, Carol was a hoe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, you know. And then you find out, you know, years later that Mike was gay. So then that kind of blows the whole, you know, what, what they were dot, dot, dotting. Yeah, well, he was probably hey. <laughs> walking away. Girl. Um, but um, the point is, it they leave indelible marks on you. You know, they, they're doing this, 
Yeah, it's like, and I think it's a great show because it does show a loving family, mm. but it's not very realistic. Right. You know, it's not very realistic to um, to have your family. I mean, I think that that's what they portrayed in the movies too. That you know, here was this family, and then everybody's looking at them like they're like they're from outer space, which you know, really, in comparison to real families, they were. Um, in the seventies, we didn't really have anything realistic. Mm -hmm. Any family that no. showed realism in the mm -hmm. 80s, you had the dichotomy of the Cosby show right. and Roseanne. Mm -hmm. Roseanne was more realistic. Unfortunately, the yeah. Yeah, and the mm -hmm. Cosby show, I wouldn't say unfortunately, I thought it was a pretty good show. Yeah, I like this The Cosby too, show was, it was almost like, it was a back, you know, back, um, it was a throwback to, to the Partridge family. Or not the Partridge family, but I mean the Brady the Brady Bunch, Bunch mm -hmm. kids. You know the oh here are my perfect kids mm -hmm. in my perfect life. You know I'm a, I'm a doctor, she's a lawyer. You know money's never a concern. Um, and then you have the almost like the the opposite of it. You have this white trash family in the Midwest who's struggling mm -hmm. with money and their three kids, and yet there is love and there's you know. Understanding and there's yelling and all that, mm -hmm. which was more realistic, and I think that that's what, why she, you know, why they were able to to last as long as they did. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Whereas the Cosby thing, it was I don't know that was, it was just caca. I don't know. I didn't really watch the Cosby show because I didn't really find it humorous. Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch too much. But I mean, that was one of those. Honestly, the Cosby show. Ooh, why are we getting blurry again? I don't like oh, when that. Okay, let's see. Sorry to try to stay in in the camera. And maybe the movement is is. You know, I think with the Cosby Show, it was they started having their problems, so to speak, later on in the show. The kids got older, mm -hmm. and that's when the problems kicked in, which mm -hmm. is also when it needed to, because that's when TV was changing. Mm -hmm. You know, coming. Uh, okay, if we're going to get kind of technical with literature with stories we know that every story needs to have an antagonist a protagonist it needs to have um you know ups and downs it needs to have a problem that they you know that the protagonist is you okay <laughs> no i just noticed i had a little curl here <laughs> thus my hair is not perfect it needs to have a problem that they're overcoming you know mm -hmm. um that is that's literature that's good mm -hmm. storytelling you have to have that the thing is that just because we we have it in TV and in movies and that kind of stuff doesn't, doesn't mean our our lives have has to right you know um, we don't need to have enemies in real life we don't mm -hmm. need to have you know one of the things that we find is that you know people are like well you know that really doesn't affect me I know it's not real but what it does is is creates almost a lax in in being, um, I don't know, I've lost all my words because I've been writing for three days. <laughs> but, but being stringent with yourself in terms of your boundaries, how you allow yourself to live your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if you watch things like, you know, reality TV and watch a lot of Jerry Springer type mm -hmm. shows where... You know, it's all the, or, you know, more Povich and you always want to know who's the baby daddy and all <laughs> that stuff. Then your life becomes that. Mm -hmm. Your life, be, you know, begins to mirror that because you don't see anything wrong with that. Now, um... Whereas most people really don't question who the baby daddy is. No, usually no. Yeah. Usually no. I, I didn't guess. question. Yeah. You did when he came out. Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> and of course, I kept been guessing all through the pregnancy. So, but that's my prerogative as the mom. I could do those things. Yeah, yeah, we didn't need a paternity test or anything like that. Though. No, it was pretty obvious uh, who who the daddy was. <laughs> but um, in some cases, it's not. And I think that you know, it's like when we go back to. I mean, it's like look at the stuff that's happening now with the kids, where they do have these this lack of okay. Prior to um, President Clinton getting, you know, getting serviced in the Oval Office, <laughs> um, they weren't having um, 
you know, what do they call them? Rainbow parties or lipstick mm -hmm. parties. Kids weren't having lipstick parties or rainbow parties. And if you don't know what that is, hold on. I will tell you after I tell remind you, you're watching Relationship <laughs> Rehab here on MingleMediaTV.com. That was so official. Ouch. Yeah. Yes, she's good. Very nice. She's good. <laughs> That's what I do. At 15. See that? Smooth. Smooth. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, that rainbow party. Yeah. Um, it's where girls put on lipstick and guys wear white underwear and girls go around servicing the guys. And at the end of the party, they the guys match up to see how many colors of lipstick they have on their underwear. Yeah. Um, because, you see, that's not sex, according to the girls. You know, um, you know, performing oral sex is not sex. Even though sex is in the actual, you know, word oral sex, mm. you know, mm. it's not really sex sex because you can't get pregnant from it. But you can get sick from it. You know, and that is just so... But... This is you have the the highest office in the United States of America mm. saying that you know that's not sex. It's not sex, right? So we thought back then when he said that we thought it was funny. We thought like, oh, what a what an ass, you mm. know? I mean that he's actually arguing is this sex or not? But we thought it was funny, and some people out there actually said things like, "He's the president. Let him get his sucked," right. mm -hmm. you know. Um, now, by the way, this is not a political thing. This is not a political thing. This, this, is, is, this is teaching. This is, right. This is all back to the how the media, how right. things that get shown to everybody affect them. Affects us. Yeah. And now yeah. you have a, a whole generation of kids. Now, how many years has it been since this? Mm -hmm. Do the math. Yeah. It's been 15 years. Right. So these okay. kids have grown so up. So that 15-year-old girl who grew up in this world... Mm -hmm. Has grown up to know that blowjobs are not sex. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a girl that, that forevermore will think that a blowjob is no big deal. Okay. And that power. Yeah, power means, means that you can get a blowjob any anytime yeah, you want you should. to. Yeah. <coughs> Which then brings us to the Tiger Woods and and whatnot. The, you know, it's yeah. like they've got power. So, therefore, they should be allowed. The sense of entitlement that mm -hmm. went on with the... With that, you know, I remember because, it, you know, it's like in the Queens of Comedy, I don't know if anybody's ever watched mm -hmm. that one, they did the Kings of Comedy, which was okay, then they did the Queens of Comedy, which, which I thought way was way better, there. and Monique is the last um, comedian mm -hmm. that, they, that they show, and she talked about that, you know, the Clinton thing, and she says, you know, he's the President of the United States, you know, he should be able to get his blank sucked, mm -hmm. you know, in the White House. He's stressed, you know, whatever. And that mere, you know, it's like, I don't know anybody else, but for me, it's almost like this disconnect from reality. You know, this, hold on a second. He is the President of the United States. He's a married man, got a child, and you are advocating that it is okay for him because he is the president, to do this. So in other words, in your life, in your belief structure, mm. people with power are allowed certain concessions, like certain gimmies, right. you know. Because you are a stressed out person and because you have power, you are allowed to break commitment. Mm -hmm. Now, this might seem mm. like very heady and philosophical stuff, but if you really break it down, you'll notice that that behavior has trickled down into everything that that society is. Right. There is a certain linearity to yeah. this. Yeah, you could actually trace it. Like you know, here's this. He he got blown in the in the White House, and this is happening now. You know, and it has trickled down to to you know like the the smallest parts of this country. Mm -hmm. um, movies in general. Right. You know, it's like you they do the movies like Fast and Furious. Okay. And then the next thing you know, every every you know county has got a car club, and guys are jacking up their cars and putting nitrous oxide in their car mm -hmm. and doing all this other sh crap to their car, right? So wow, it affects us. Now, why wouldn't a story affect us? You know, why wouldn't 
things like, um, okay, one of the things that we don't do very well as human beings in this country or anywhere else on the planet is deal with grief. Mm -hmm. um, why? Because when you watch it on TV or in movies, it only takes a couple of minutes. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies of all time, Steel Magnolias. Okay. Good movie. Um, good movie. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm a chick. That's a chick flick. Definitely. Love that movie. And you can't not cry for a good 25 minutes in it. <laughs> um, so, in the movie, something very tragic happens. Everybody's crying. And you're crying a lot. And there's a loss. And then there's crying. And there's gut-wrenching crying. And then all of a sudden, you're laughing. And then after that, the crying stops. Mm -hmm. And it's not just it stops, it's done. Right. You know, it's like Everybody's life, better. And life goes on. I uh -huh. mean, that's really the, the, the message from the person who was initially crying. And, crying. Yes, there is crying. Yes. <laughs> and then no more. And then it's like, and you're done. You know, <laughs> and I mean, it's like, it's Sally Field. And she's pushing the kid on the swing and she's like, no, life goes on. And she's pushing the kid and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, okay, now suck it up. Because you're done. Right. Now, you don't think that that affects you. You don't think, mm -hmm. but it's like it registers in your brain. Mm -hmm. This woman just lost her child. She's at the funeral reception-y thing at the end. And she's already saying, life goes on. Right. Sorry, honey, but life doesn't go on there. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll go on much later. Uh, at the beginning, okay. We pointed out that we don't have definitions for things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't define relationship. We don't define love. We don't define grief and how to, to get over it. We don't really mm -hmm. have the good models. So when the bad models show up, you know, how to get over grief, you know. I always get this. when We I, cling to what we have. When mm -hmm. I would actually see clients. It's been a while since I've seen clients, but... Um, I get things like, you know, I should be over this. That was always the mm -hmm. one that, that always got me. It's like, I should be, be over this already. Why don't I get over this? You know, it's like, how long has it been? Six months. No, you shouldn't be over it. It takes two years to, minimally, to right. grieve something. Mm -hmm. Two years to grieve something. That's everything. And I'm not just talking death, because that's what we only, in our society, we only talk about grieving death. You grieve every loss, right. and when we, and when we don't acknowledge what loss is, and we don't define it properly, then that grief gets stuck. For example, you lose a job, that's loss. Mm -hmm. Your kid goes off to college, that's loss. Um, your kid um, reaches a milestone in their life. There's a loss there. You have to grieve the loss of whatever, you know. Um, Loss is going to be done in what? Uh, how many episodes? Good I'm going to like weep. <laughs> Black armband, the whole bit. <laughs> It'll easily take me two years to get over that. No? No. Go ahead. Sure, they shouldn't. Anyhow, you were saying? <laughs> I'll be sad for a while. I'll definitely be <laughs> sad for a while. <laughs> but, you know, the loss, I mean, you know, you watch all these, it's just so stupid. It just really drives me crazy. That there, that there isn't um, a definition out there that, that people understand and that, you know, is, is it difficult for people to get the real concepts of what mental health is about? You know, I mean, things like grieving a loss. Mm. You know, I mean, our whole, our whole society is, is built on get over it, move on, don't emote, um, which, of course, messes up our relationships. You know, when you break up with somebody. I mean, here's a good example right now. Uh, what's her face? Paris Hilton just, just broke up with her boyfriend of like, I don't know how many months. Mm -hmm. She's already out there. She's doing her thing. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading today. She's, oh, I'm over it. I deserve better than that. You know, she's going to continue to pick the same assholes over and over again. Mm -hmm. Because she's not grieving her losses. Mm-hmm. 
And she refuses to stop to grieve her losses. Then again, she's also sallow as a teaspoon, so <laughs> yeah, well, there's true. that too. There's that too. But you know what? It's not My even opinion. just that. But it's not just that. Everybody does that. Because when you when you talk to your friend who just broke up with somebody, what's the advice? Get back out there. Yes, right. Uh -huh. Have some revenge sex. You know? Um, you know hey, that's hot. <laughs> okay, so Caesar is saying, uh, don't you want the person to grieve and then get, o get over it and, and on? No. It doesn't oh, work like that. But, it doesn't uh, work like that, though. It's kind of like um, it hits you in waves. You know, and if you think about like a storm, the, um, when you have the initial loss, when there's like the death or, or the, the dramatic change or whatever it is, it hits you. And that day and that week and that month, mm -hmm. you're getting those waves of, of pain. You know, the, that you're feeling that initial, I don't have this person anymore, or this situation has changed and my life has changed. So you have, you know, that ouch, 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 and this is why you cry more. This is why you feel sadness, why, why there's, you know, um, a very temporary depression with it. As you start separating yourself from the actual um, loss event, the waves, like a storm, become less and less, mm -hmm. you know, and they start coming in, you know, you know, less often, okay? As you, as you pull away and you start li living your life, your brand new life, after the loss, it should hit you every now and then. Something will happen and you'll do like the, oh my God, I wish they were here to see this. Mm -hmm. And that sadness will come up too. Okay? And that's normal. Right. That's good. That's somewhere where you do cry. <laughs> oh wow, I just got all emotional just thinking <laughs> about it. Because, hmm. I mean, we had a friend die years ago. Mm -hmm. and um, And I still grieve her and I still... I mean, and it's been over two years, but I don't grieve her in that, oh, my God. I grieve her in that, wow, she would have thought this was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's changed from from painful grief right. to a memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's, you know, and it's less, at this point, it's less grieving from my point of view and more grieving from her point of view. Right. In the sense that, you know, I'm sad that she missed this. Mm-hmm. Because she would have loved that. Yeah. Um, not, I'm sad because I don't have her, mm -hmm. you know, to to share this with us. Um, it's different, you know. But being able to grieve in a healthy manner is the only way to live in a healthy way. Right. Because most people, most people out there, and I'm talking probably the ones I'm, you know, who are watching, don't know how to grieve. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's sad because it becomes very stifled so that when you have another loss, either you'll go one of two ways. Either you'll get very, very depressed or because, you know, I hear somebody else who's leaving me or you just can't stop um, the emoting. Right. So then depressed and a lot of emoting or you just go numb right? and you don't feel anything. And you're like, well, you know. That's a number, somebody else who left me. Mm -hmm. And that numbness carries through into absolutely everything that you do. You're not going to feel those highs anymore because you're numb. So that's very sad. So the, <laughs> the thing is, Caesar, that the... No, Caesar. Right. One, no, we don't want people to stay in the, the dark place forever. And as a matter of fact, by not allowing the grieving, then mm -hmm. that's how people stay in the dark right. place. Because or, they won't deal. Yeah. yeah. Or they cut themselves off from the feeling and right. they become numb. Mm -hmm. You know, the um, one of the things that we do in our society is that we actually like the numb feeling. Mm -hmm. That's why we have so much addiction in our society. Mm -hmm. Because it's okay to numb out. Um, it's okay to numb out. Um, you prefer to have people numb out than to emote. Okay, so like if you're at a funeral, you're like, okay, okay, you know, that's okay, you know, you, know, you can stop crying mm. now, you're good, you're good. What mm. you're saying is, stop crying, you're making me uncomfortable, numb out already, and get used to this pain, because life is pain. 
And we really say these things to people. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's not, maybe not in direct words, but we'd say it in our actions. That's the pep. The padding, the, okay, okay, that's right. You're fine now. Okay, you're good. We do it to our children. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, I can't deal with you crying like that because that's, yeah. that's too much right. for me, you Basically know. Basically a walk it off mentality. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> but we learn that on TV. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, all right, you know, go on. And we're like, wow, they're so strong. Look how they go on. And then you think, okay, that's a great example of how to be. The better example of how to be is to... Go ahead and feel those feelings mm -hmm. and get through it and the pain. Now, in the dark place, the dark place is when you don't allow yourself to do that. Right. So that when anything hits you, you get depressed. Anything hits you, you get depressed. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you start compounding all the depressions, one after the other. Okay? This is what, what media has taught us, that feeling feelings is bad, Medicating feelings is good, mm -hmm. and numbing feelings is better. Go ahead and say who we are. Do our yes, yes, it is time, because we are, if you just tuned in, we're a relationship rehab with Lee and Paul from coupledum.com here on minglemediatv.com. Okay, so Caesar, no, that's not what we're saying. We're not saying that um, the Sally Fields shouldn't move on. We're saying that the message... And find happiness they, again? Right. She just lost... Her daughter. Right. The the me she's not there yet. Yeah. See the message. The because of the nature of literature, and we know that you know because of the nature of storytelling. Yes, they have to conclude things in a certain amount of time. But the message that's being laid down is that in a hour and what is it like forty five minute movie, you know that within that time, she's going to handle all of her grief mm -hmm. on a certain schedule. It should look a certain way. Mm -hmm. You need to have that big breakdown and then suck it up, get together, you know, get yourself together and move on. Would you rather the movie end on a sad note? Oh, hell no. <laughs> that's not what we're so saying. That's not what we're saying. Right. We're saying is that what we learn from these things, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, it's kind of like knowing better. You know, when you watch a cartoon mm -hmm. and you, you see them hit, you know, use a sledgehammer to smack somebody else on the mm -hmm. head. You know better. You can't do that in real life because you'll kill that person. However, when we're watching live action, when we're watching real actors do things, and you don't know what's better for you, like what I'm saying right now, what's better for you is to grieve your loss and to grieve it for as long as you need to. You know, anything over anything over a year, a year and a half, you need to start seeing counseling. Mm -hmm. But you work out those feelings. Now, if you're watching Sally Fields and you do the, you know, life moves on, you're like, okay, that that's just moving on. I mean, they're basically, you know, need to move on the movie and to get to the to the conclusion of the movie. So she has to say that. In other words, she, there is hope for her future. Got it. Mm -hmm. But you're able to cognitively split what is movie land and what is reality land. Mm -hmm. Reality land is she'll grieve her daughter. Yes, she'll miss her for the rest of her life, but that, that grief, that pain is gone. Movie land, she's better. She's good. She'll right. never cry again mm -hmm. because life will move on, and she's got her grandson to live with. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, and because we don't take the time to teach people what mental health really is and, and keep feeding them this pap, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. okay, here's another good one. I, Carly. <laughs> 14-year-old girl being watched by her semi-special semi brother, and she's doing web shows. Yeah. We do a web show, people. Let me tell you, if we didn't have yeah, uh, this uh, much, I don't know, what's the word? Um, I can only think of it in Spanish now. Modesty? Modesty. <laughs> we'd be doing nasty stuff. Oh, yeah. Because the first thing we do as soon as we sit down, it's like I always proposition them. Why? Because... It's a camera. That's right. You know, that's what you do. <laughs> but the iCarly thing, good Lord, you know, and then we're w letting our kids watch that, and it's like, oh, I think I could do this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you're waiting for Chris Hansen to start beating down her door because you know that that's next. Right. So there's a, it's definitely one of those, no, that's not real. Mm -hmm. 
Now, it's as adults, it's a little bit easier for us to look at the, you know, look at that show and go, that's not real. You will never get to do a web show without <laughs> us around, you know, to our, to our kids. Yet, we don't, a lot of people, uh, maybe most, don't make that connection with movies and TV and things of that sort. Right. Okay. I hate the blurry. I think it's because of me moving. Sorry. You have to not move so much. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying like that. <laughs> okay. okay. Just as we're talking, you know, whenever we do, like, photos and stuff, they make me open my eyes. And when I smile, I lose my eyes. And that's a very sad thing to me. So I can't even smile on camera. <laughs> I lose my eyes. I don't mind. I know. Okay. And you would charge money for this. <laughs> yes. yeah. You know what? I would charge money for that. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you got to pay for talent. That's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, it, there is a setting on on this. It's got the, um, the automatic, um, what is it, focus Focusing. thing. And it's, I don't know what's up with and that. And yet, the hair still looks great. This is true. That That's doesn't matter. Part. That Nothing, is the It could get part. blurry as long as the hair yeah. looks good. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So anyway... Grief. You see, yeah. you know, it's like you start having good conversations when you start talking about grief because people don't like talking about grief. Mm -hmm. It's uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. You know, we have, in our society, we have, I mean, there's loss all the time. Mm -hmm. right. I think and we don't right. talk about it. Basically, I think the point to, that we're trying to get across is that in the absence of knowing how to deal with grief, for example, right. health, you know, in a healthy manner, People default to what they see on TV, right. movies, etc., which sums it up, you know, in an hour minus commercials. That's one of the things um, that I wrote recently is the idea that, you know, rehab takes 15 minutes and then everybody loves you afterwards. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, on the show, it's like, no, tough love. Oh, boy, you better go to rehab. And then they go to rehab for, you know, uh, a detox for a few days and then they come back and it's like, Oh, you were right. I was really messed up in my life. And it's like, oh, we all love you again. And then there is no more addiction talk. Right. They doubled addiction in one in one episode. Hmm. And addiction is so not like that. This is why, you know, Paul and I write a lot about our, we mentioned um, Dr. Drew so much. Because he's really showing what addiction is. Mm -hmm. He's showing the face of addiction, right. which is messed up. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the best parts about about that, because you know, he with the 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 rehab shows, they have the same problem that every other piece of literature does, or mm -hmm. you know, is that they have to finish it in a certain amount of time. They have to get to somewhere. They have to have the antagonist. It's right. got to be it's got to be interesting. So you got to find out who's the bitch or the asshole right. on the show. Who's mm -hmm. going to be causing the problems? Who's bringing the drama? Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is that with rehab. That one's an easy one because they're all going to do it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, you know, my background in rehab is that I used to run rehab centers for years. You know, so when I watch him, I'm like, yep, that's how it happens. Mm -hmm. There's nothing staged on that stuff. On that show, I've seen it. I've lived it. Right. I've been there. You know, looks, like um, looks I mean, not so clean. That's the only thing that, that always gets me. It's like, <laughs> that's a really nice place. I used to work, um, I used to work rehab. Let's see, I worked in addictions for 15 years. Hmm. Um, I've worked sex addiction. I've worked, um, actually drug and alcohol addiction. I've done it. I've worked with people like, you know, in an office and they'd come and do group once a week. You know, that very mild kind and I've worked in rehab centers yeah. where I was the clinical director of rehab centers and I'd have seven eight programs under me where I would go in there you know different you know units within the same complex <laughs> and different types of uh, clientele in in each unit and um, you know I've done therapy under a sink I've done therapy with people hiding under beds mm -hmm. I've done therapy, you know, it's been, I know what it's like. Now, when they show it on TV, it's not like that unless you're watching Dr. Drew. And um, okay. even intervention, mm. even intervention, I, I take issue with. Right. I take issue with an intervention. The only thing I don't take issue with them is that, you know, the idea that, you know, most of it doesn't work. 
because that's the reality. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but I take issue with the the let's follow them around with the camera for for a couple of weeks and then sit them all down for an intervention. Yeah. You know, out of <laughs> out of most interventions, yeah. you know, you would say and how often am I right? Oh, uh, yeah. Like 100% yeah. of the time. Always. I could yeah. tell them who's going to go and who's yeah, not going to go. Yeah, who's going in. Anyhow, with Dr. Drew, one of the with the rehab shows, one of the things that I like about it is that there's one character, if you will, it's not really a character, one of the people who Clients. keeps, yeah, who keeps um, relapsing. And he's been back, what, four seasons, Was something like that? Yeah. And... I like it because it shows a longitudinal aspect to to this. Yeah. This is one of the few places where you see something that's not just wrapped up in an hour minus uh, commercials. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, relapse is a part of recovery, and and you never see that on mm -hmm. movies or mm -hmm. you know, it's like occasionally you'll see that and you'll be like, oh my god, that's really horrible, but. You know, most commonly, like in a TV show, if they decide to do the addiction episode, um, you're not going to show the relapse because there will be relapse. Mm -hmm. And it's only when when people relapse that they really start understanding what addiction is. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, you know. So this is this is also a lesson you take into your life. You know that to be prepared for that kind of stuff. You know, when you have people around you that are are in an addiction pattern are are I'm like I hate saying suffering with addiction you know because I hate using the word suffering in general it was very dramatic mm -hmm. um, but how about you know almost dying from addiction yeah. you know that that I'll use but um, not suffering I'm not that dramatic um, you know then you know that even when they go to rehab the likelihood of them relapsing is very, very high. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't show you that on TV. Right. Because that doesn't make for good TV, now does it? You're just going so right. yeah. to keep dealing with the same thing over and over and over, over again. again. Right. Um, but it's, a, it's an important concept mm -hmm. to know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Now, since we're talking about reality TV, because they're kind of our next target anyhow. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, we... We have suddenly elevated all of these losers to celebrity status, and and now everybody wants to be on TV. And now, right? And everybody, yes. yes. And everybody. The thing is that the way they want to be just another set of losers. Yeah, right? right. The way they want to get there is not because they have anything valuable to say or like, talent or talent. We're going for that. We're hoping mm -hmm. that there's some talent and value here. Uh, no, they're going because they're loudmouth whores. Um, am I allowed to say that here? Um, Me? <laughs> but they're on TV because they're, you know, um, yeah, loudmouth horse. Loudmouth. They're... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see, they're ma manipulative. They're, um, you know, in some cases they're just... Aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah. Stupid as hell in, yeah. in many cases. That helps. You know, um, yeah. Things yeah, and just fame whores, yeah. just fame whores in general. Mm -hmm. And then, and we're giving we're giving this platform for these idiots mm -hmm. to talk. You know, notice that they're not bringing out Nobel laureates. Yeah, you know? right. yes. they're not bringing out you know doctors. You yeah. know, and, and mm -hmm. people looking for a cure for for some horrible disease. No, they're bringing out um, train wrecks, I, train wrecks, high school <laughs> dropouts. Uh -huh. um, you know, who aren't who aren't opposed to sticking their tongue down somebody's throat, mm -hmm. you know, sensational people, the people that 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 um, that snuck their way into the to the White House party and took pictures with the president and stuff like that. Those people are going to be the on the housewives of Washington D.C. Yeah, I mean, they should be in a federal. They should prison. be in a freaking <laughs> federal prison for doing what they did. Right. Instead, it's like, oops, mom, they got, man. right? They got a, a TV contract. Yeah. Huh. That's it. We're doing it wrong. We're doing we? completely wrong. Yeah. Now then again, we didn't really want to be on TV. No, that this wasn't is true. Thing. Yes, we're writers. We're writers. Yes. We're real writers. However, if you do want us for the Housewives of Miami, yeah. 
<laughs> no. Yeah. Just send something I don't to have, Stephanie. So I, don't, right I don't have enough. I don't have enough silicone <laughs> or any silicone. I don't need silicone. That's true. For my to break. I could use some. Yes, you could use some. Silicone. I have no webs. No, Sorry. <laughs> a side note. I have no webs. Yeah. But this is what we see, and this is what we consider normal. Mm -hmm. We consider normal. Okay, you're going clubbing, which means that you're going to kiss everybody. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, um, girls, go have girls one of them. boys, doesn't really matter. Right. You're going to show your titties because that's normal. Mm -hmm. You know, um, get drunk, drunk, drunk. And that's, it's like, this is a normal way of being. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember being very young. I remember going to clubs and stuff. Never showed my titties in a club. No. Never showed my titties in a club. I mud wrestled on Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> but I never showed my, my titties in a club. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. And now you know. Now the whole world knows. That's right. Um, and if I had sunset? video of that, Santa Monica. I would Sorry, it wasn't it Sunset. Right it was Santa Monica. Uh. Santa Monica Boulevard. Um, down the street from the Fat Burgers. That's all I could remember. I was drunk. I was very drunk. But um, yeah, I don't think there's any video of that. The darn. I doubt that there's any video of that. This is before. I mean, the video camera they would have had to use was like probably weighed more than than some of them. Oh, bye, Caesar. Bye, Caesar. Thank Be you. Good. And while we're at it, you are watching um, Relationship Rehab here with Lee and Paul from CoupleDumb.com on Mingle Media TV. Yes. Yes, that is us. So, yeah. Where are we? Uh, so we're yeah. I mean, people like the Jersey Jersey Shore people. You know, it's like they're all pretty good looking. I don't think Snooki is good looking. No, she looks kind of like an animal to me. <laughs> she's she's got she's got a very weird little face. Yeah, I don't think that, I don't thing. think it's her face that's mainly on TV. Yeah. So basically, you're just looking at her boobs. And that's the only reason she's up there. I mean, if she's and the hair. she is not there for her intellectual sparkling uh, personality, no. you know, conversation. That is not the reason. She's there because she has, you know, tits and ass. Wait. And will slap somebody down. Zippy told me, oh, she's not even here anymore. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, I don't know where Victoria went. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, she she left before we got to, to leap in and say Crap. hi and that kind of Sorry. stuff. Sorry. You were in so. the middle of our thing. Melissa Etheridge. Oh, yeah. At least being nice and topical now. You know, mm -hmm. you know that Melissa Etheridge is, you know, um, I guess getting a divorce. I don't know if she's actually officially married to her. I know that they did a ceremony. Okay. So, you know. I'm here. I know. I love him. Yay. Um, <laughs> and listen to, we love Melissa Etheridge. We used to. We used to, at least. Now all of her music kind of sounds the same. Um, in you know, our Like opinion. a lot. Right. But listen to some of the music. It's all the same angsty, passionate, you know, I'm going to die without you. We're going to burn in flames and... And our passion will burn and everything. Yeah. And, you know. and our love. And you can pretty much see why... She breaks up all yeah, the time. Yeah, she's breaking up. Because of, yeah. You can't just, keep that going. Yeah. You can't keep mm -hmm. that fire and momentum and and drama and, and all going mm -hmm. for, for years and years and years. Right. It's yeah. not even you can't. You don't want to. <coughs> no, relationships evolve. They're supposed to evolve. It's what makes, it's part of love. You know, there are domains of love. And that hot, fiery, you know, all up in the other one's stuff, <laughs> kind of, you know, is, um, it's the, it's a first step, but it is not the last. That's not where you want to, you know, that's not where you want to stay. You want it to, uh, to evolve, evolve into, that. you know, a long-term, you know, we know things about each other, we're intimate, you know, not just sexually, but everything that, you know, all of her music is all about that, Fire, part, right, that first and... fiery part of passion. Yeah. Because you know? I think the music about, you know, and so then we went to our favorite place and had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it fun? It's not so good. It's not so fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, I think that the, the problem that, that she has is that she's probably a relationship addict at this point. 
Mm. Um, now there's there's question of whether or not she's been cheating on her girlfriend, mm. which I wouldn't doubt. Yeah, you know, if, if the only thing that she can she could write about mm. is that fire burning, blah blah blah. Right. Then this is what interests her. This right. is what you know. She's a she's you know as we like to say she's an artist. She's of course she's fiery and whatever. But that's also that's also to the to her detriment. Mm -hmm. You know, because see. There are other types of songs out there. There are love songs of, you know, I just want to hold you, um, I get lost in your eyes, that kind of stuff. Uh, they, and they're beautiful, but they are also the next part of relationship. Right. You know, they are the intimacy building part. Look, look at I brought you your favorite combos. <laughs> <laughs> See? Right there. I'm going to cry. <laughs> See, that's love. That's right. That's 21-year-old love uh -huh. right there. Yeah. Yeah, combos of wine. There we go. <laughs> Paul's happy night. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that is the you know there is more than just that fiery passion, but that's all she you know that's all she sings about. And I'm guessing that that's because that's what she lives. Yeah. And then if it's not like that, it's not worth it. Right. Sad. Yeah. This is the. So uh, here's the question: Since mm -hmm. we're media people, and it's and it's you know. Just me and and Paul and you out there. Um, another and one else. other. Yeah, um, what is the ethics behind this? You know, is it, is it ethical to continue to to portray relationship in an unhealthy manner, or does it behoove us as as media people to <coughs> to really introduce a new conversation in, into the world about creating healthy relationship? Because one of the things. That, um, that I was looking at, and I, and I put that in my Facebook status, was, you know, the, um, the numbers on, on marriage are really just horrible. Mm -hmm. And specifically, the numbers on how many people are getting married nowadays. The, mm -hmm. the numbers have dropped so dramatically all over the world. There's only like three countries in the entire world, the uh, developed countries, yeah. where the marriages have gone up. And they've only gone up by a by a slight percentage. You know? Whereas the other ones that have gone down, we're talking gone between, down a lot. like you know, between five to fifty percent. Right. You know, we're not we're not just talking. You know, it's only going down like two or three percent. We're talking significant. Um, I in this country it was fifty marriages per one thousand <clears throat> women <clears throat> over the age of fifteen mm -hmm. in nineteen ninety six, <clears throat> and in two thousand four. No, in 2005, it was 40 marriages. Now, that might not seem like, you know, maybe you're thinking, hey, that's a good thing. Maybe that's a... Well, no, what's happening is that more women are opting to, to cohabitate. Right. And now, you know, a lot the consensus in the United States right now is like, well, maybe that's a good thing. Go ahead, learn, you know, live together, see if, they, if that's going to work. Well, what we know as social scientists out there... And what we've known for decades, I mean, this is even back when I went to school in the 80s, that couples who live together before they get married tend to get divorced after they get married. Mm -hmm. um, because it's the changing of the relationship after the fact that creates tension in the, in the relationship. And it's almost like, you know, um, taking a fish from the ocean, which is cohabitation, mm -hmm. and then throwing it in a tank. It's almost as if, if they feel suffocated by the new commitment. So we know that doesn't work. So what they're doing is really stacking up the numbers against marriage in general in the first place. You know, so in the long run, I mean. Yeah. So, um, but we know that if you take out, um, if you take out really young people who get married mm -hmm. and very Christian people, that actually the numbers aren't that bad. Right. In terms of marriage, mm -hmm. that people who identify themselves as Christian, if we take those out of the, the equation, <laughs> and um, people who got married before the age of 21, mm -hmm. right. take both of those out, then really our divorce rate's only like 20% in right. this country. Yeah. And poor people. And poor people. Yeah. I mean, you take out... If you just leave the yeah. educated people who got married over the age of 24 or 23, I think it is, 23, mm -hmm. then you only have a 20% divorce rate. Right. Okay? Which is not bad. Right. 
Mm -hmm. That's not a bad number to have. That's actually, you know, statistically a very healthy number to have. Mm -hmm. But it's those other people that are, are the ones that are, are falling prey to watching all this crap on TV who aren't educated mm -hmm. enough to know the difference between reality and what they're watching on TV. See, and I would even say that it's that, that other group uh, who media is pandering to. Yeah. You know, it's not the... It's know, the majority. I mean, I mean let's yeah. face it. You know, we know from the bell curve that, you know, and this might sound really crappy, but people like us aren't the average. Right. You know, mm -hmm. highly educated um, people who got married, you know, after they were, you know, 23 mm -hmm. are not the average. The average is high school graduate or a little bit of college, mm -hmm. um, you know, making, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. That's the average person getting married. Those are the ones that, that they're pandering to. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if, I would say that, you know, our socioeconomic class, you know, we look at, at a show like that and we watch it because it's a train wreck. Mm -hmm. And we know that it's a train wreck. You know, and you know, and from there we say, "Oh, it's fun." I would never do that, but it's fun. We're not going to emulate you know, any of them. She's not getting snooky hair or any of those kinds of things at any I time can't. soon. This is too perfect. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but there are those out there who do want to be that. Get the bump. Get the bump. Get the snooky bump. Uh huh. Ah. We could do that with you. Oh, okay. You know, get that There's higher. No. <laughs> no, no, I don't have the lips for it. Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> That's how she has her lips all the time. I don't understand that. I've never watched the show. I've only seen her picture, like mm. on Perez Hilton and things like that. And it's always. But then again, doesn't anybody like say to people, "Stop doing this"? No, apparently people. That's like the thing now. The, yeah. Everybody does mm. that. Okay, we're doing the Matrix thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a connection. Go ahead. Yeah, I hate that. I hate the. <laughs> yeah. I hate that. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. It's like you're ready. What are you waiting for? Somebody. Kiss I don't you? know. Somebody. I guess so. Just. See, I do it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> no, we can't do that until after the, TV. After Got the it. show. After the uh, show. Got it. <laughs> See, because once. That's a slippery slope. Because once we start down that. That's right. You know? Then, you know. First kissing, then a little groping, and then, you know, pay per view. And then it's pay per view. Right. Then it's pay per view. <laughs> Nothing but pay per view around right here. <laughs> oh. Okay. But anyway, um, to sum up, mm -hmm. you know, it's like I, I tell people this all the time, and we write about this all the time on our web on our website, coupledum.com, about. Learning what a relationship is. What does it mean? What does it mean to be in love? What's the healthy stuff? So that when we're watching all this crap out there, when we're listening to the music, because there's a lot of crappy music out there. Um, and I'm not saying that the music is crappy. The lyrics. Right. You know, what the they're message. saying, the message in the music mm -hmm. is very unhealthy. Um, so that when we're watching these things and listening to these things, we can discern what is artistic license and what is what could be healthy you know for us and we know that the difference is our lives you know can maintain a certain amount of health and that you know our, our entertainment doesn't have to be like that you know we saw the movie date night recently mm -hmm. and we thought it was a great movie it was yeah. fun uh, very funny and very I mean very poignant in the you know it's like yeah it can be like that and actually what we liked about it was that it wasn't I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, the idea that they would have to go through this um, this whole horrible night to to be able to see that they need to spend more time together. Mm -hmm. They need to create more intimacy. Mm -hmm. We have one minute. We have one minute. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that 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 they need to do that to be able to see Marky that. Mark was hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing is, I just don't like him. His body was okay. It wasn't like when he was younger. I'll tell you that. Yeah, he's definitely. He's bunched out a bit. Because <laughs> yeah, remember, remember when he was with the Funky Bunch? That was hot. 
<laughs> that was really hot. Yeah. And when he was with the Funky Bunch, that was an incredible body. Now it's not what it used to be. It is not what it used to be. Um, anyway, so the point is, you know, get educated in this stuff. Keep watching the show. Learn what's healthy out there. Read coupledum.com about what's healthy. So mine isn't either. <laughs> it's okay. He's and got goodbye. like 15 kids. And...